Did the Orioles do enough? That's, I think that's always a question. I, it's a yes and no. I mean, as players, it's like, look, I'm riding and dying with the dudes that I've been with. I've been with the spring training. We've been out to dinner. Um, as uh, Now sitting back and, you know, being retired and working the media side of it, you think of like, okay, could have we added Dylan Cease? Could have we added this guy? Could have they added this, you know, here and there? Jack Flaherty, I think, is a hell of a move. It's great for him to get out of St. Louis, uh, be refreshed, going to join a – energized team, youthful team. And I just, I think that it was a, a really good move <clears throat> to get more. There's always, you know, those kind of hypotheticals, but at the same time, it's like, do I need to get more? Because I'm going to ride with my guys. They could have got another offensive guy because uh, Mullins and, and Hicks have been down a little bit. So you got to maybe, maybe sure up that. I think they were talking about uh, who's the, the switch hitter, the center fielder from, um, from the Cardinals. Uh, oh, but Dylan Carlson, Dylan Carlson. I think he yep. was mentioned a little bit and I mean, he's a hell of a player too. Uh, but I think they did because they want to ride in house, but at, like, it's like on the other side of it is like, did they, I think they did. And I mean, time will only tell. AJ, you liked the Orioles trade deadline. Uh, I thought it was good. I didn't think it was great. I thought they could have added a bullpen piece. I think Adam, let me ask you this. You, you were a player, you're a Baltimore guy. You love the Orioles clearly, which, you know, it was your team. Do you think they did enough to win the World Series? I think they did and they didn't. Like, we needed, we got Andrew Miller. Someone was telling me the other day, it was like, in 14, you're either going to be facing Andrew Miller or he's going to be on your team. Matt Moore was out there, but the Angels are going for it. I think if they got a strong left hander to bridge that gap, because they have Cano and Bautista, who are just nasty itself, but to add a lefty to throw, to offset everyone else like we had a Miller to get to Hunter and O'Day in Britain. So they, I think they did, but only time will tell because, you know, Houston, again, is the is the team to beat, and you got to go through them. And they just added uh, Verlander back. So would you, you – know, But would you – here's my question. Would you – Cano, and we saw Cano and Batista. Batista had to throw two innings the other day because their bullpen was, was a little short, right? He did it. He made it through. In Toronto, I think it was, and then Cano's been—he's been getting—he's been, getting, been getting hit a little bit more now, starting to get you know a little bit more tired. Yeah, as Scott is saying, his arm is you know, a little so bit. Todd Father's heard me say over the past. Few as years, he's, he's getting tired, he's getting tired. I mean, yeah, this he's is getting like, tired. yeah, which because they've been using them because they've been trying to win, but they have so many prospects, right? The Orioles and they have duplicate prospects as we've talked about. Would you not have liked them to seen like go for it? This is your shot because honestly. I know the Rangers and Astros made moves, but the AL is down this year compared to other years. The Yankees aren't going to be down forever. The Red Sox aren't going to be down forever. The Rays are kind of, eh, right now, they're they're struggling a little bit. So why not just go all in and say, you know what? This is our shot. Let's take a shot. And you know what? We have duplicate prospects. If you're the Orioles GM, you look, you're Mike Elias. You look at it and you say, okay, we have two shortstop prospects. We have two third base. We have two second base. We have two right fielders. Whatever it is, trade one of them, whichever one you think is less, and then try to get that next piece that could possibly, I don't want to say guarantee because you never know, but give you an even better shot at it. 100%. And that's that's where I was thinking of Cease. He's that. Because yes. the control for next two years, he's disgusting. He's an ace. He wants to be in that moment. And he slots everyone down to where they need to be. Um, back in the day, we had Tillman as running, we was running him out as our ace. And – if we had one other guy, if we were able to acquire a big name guy, a, a, a ace, it would have pushed everybody down a slot to where they go. No disrespect to anybody, but aces are hard to come by in baseball, as you know. And you got duplicate prospects, like you said. So, you know, the, the, <laughs> Cease was my guy. I mean, Cor Corbin Burns was my guy at the beginning, but Cease was my guy. And, you know, no, I mean, I'm sure other teams tried to pry him away. But you, we got Jack Flaherty over here in, in Birdland, so let's see what let's see what he does because he's gonna have a, a nice fresh start. My game concern, one. What? Go ahead, Scott. What do you no, got? I was say, AJ, game I was one. Say, who? Game one. Verlander or Scherzer versus Flaherty or Kramer or Grayson Rodriguez or Kyle Bradish. Gibson. Bradish. Yeah. Bradish. I mean, right. game two. Framber Evaldi versus one of those guys. Game three. Montgomery versus. <laughs> You know, it's like, okay, I get it. Their bullpen's great. I get it. They can hit.
But it's like the name. I now listen. They might do it, but the names on the paper are just so. You know, it's not a disrespect. It's just because these guys are a lot of these guys are you know, not a lot, but some of these guys are Hall of Fame names, right? Where they have the pedigree of done it. So it's like, all right, if I'm Mike Elias, I'm like, okay, we need to find. And and no disrespect, Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty might be that guy when he gets a new start, but we'll have to see. Cease was the guy for me. <laughs> I'm yeah, that guy, no, I that's that that's top end talent right there. My my yeah. problem because we have some in the chat that are bringing up Cincinnati too. So I love how they're like, all right, Jonesy for Baltimore, you rep him. Todd Father for <laughs> Cincinnati. I have the same issue in that they're so damn young. Those teams, including their pitching, I worry about them these last two months and then in the postseason too. Young, not big names that have been tested, that have been there, that have been through this long of a season. You know, you've probably played with dudes where it's like you get to September and they're like, dude, I'm gassed, right? No doubt, no doubt. And for the Reds, I mean, not to switch gears, they um, they didn't really do anything. So no. you, you think about it. They, You know, Joey Votto would sit there and say, listen, man, oh, we're, we're all in. Don't worry about it. You know, we didn't need anybody. He didn't necessarily say we didn't need anybody. Listen, we're, they're a group together. They've been playing well. I get it, but. Then you see them what they did yesterday. They lost 20 to nine. It's like, oh, <laughs> shoot, maybe we should have picked up another pitcher. So hindsight 2020, I think those two teams should have did something a little bit more. At least the Orioles picked up Flaherty. But for the Reds' sake, another pitcher would have definitely boded well for them. Do we have other winners and losers, that, names that you want to throw out there? Losers is easy. The Brewers. So uh, the Brewers are a winner or a loser for you? I say they're a winner by getting yeah. Santana. That boasts, uh, that definitely boasts their offense and defense. He's a terrific first baseman. I don't think he gets enough credit for that. And Mark Canna. Um, they got Canna. And Andrew Chafin. Uh, yeah, like that's a nice go. little deadline for that. that. that that's a nice deadline because Chafin, Chafin gets out them uh, tough lefties late late innings. and to, Anything to bridge to, to bridge to get the ball to Devin Williams, you do. Where, where the hell were uh, – Todd and I just did an interview on another show – where were the twins? Mm-hmm. We're going to talk to Aaron Gleeman about them later, so we'll save most of that. Yankees, Red Sox, who else were, were dead Giants. silent? Giants. The Red Giants Sox. hold the first wild card spot. Are they? Do they not believe in themselves to do nothing? Are they a perfect ball club? No. <laughs> what, what the hell? Giants fans are freaking out, AJ. I mean, you played there. This is a big market team. And they're waiting, and they're waiting, and they won't get a franchise player. Some some of it has been them trying and failing in that regard. But now you're at the deadline. You've built up a farm system. Still nothing? They, hey, they're in the first place in the wild card, so maybe Farhan Zaidi and Gabe Kalper are like, we can make this work. And they listen, they're the king of the little moves, right? They make little tiny moves that equal big production on the field. So maybe they think they can hang on and do this, but – yeah, I would have liked to have seen him go out and, listen, get another pitcher like everybody else, find a bat if possible. Bats are very scarce. So it's a it's a, it's a a weird – it was a strange deadline. There was a lot of trades. But then, we, you know, the Yankees, right? Let's talk about the Yankees. It felt like the Yankees went out and got Kenyon Middleton just to say, hey, we made a move at the end. Like it was the last-minute move. Oh, we did something, right? But where was the Yankees move that, that could, could get them into the postseason? Can we show that no, tweet too while we're talking about it that, that I, I've seen – on here from, and, and I don't know who this is, but he was very funny. Jay, jobs that are lifetime appointments. Pope, federal judge, White Sox GM, Yankees GM. Those dudes have been there. I mean, oh. Cashman's been there forever, forever. He's been there for like a quarter century. There, There's a humongous generation of Yankee fans that were not born when he took over. And then obviously, AJ, I think you emptied the tank on the White Sox yesterday. But Rick Hahn, you know, is about to go through – uh, his one billion three build too, Rick and, and Kenny with him. So Kenny Williams. So I don't get it. I mean, for me also on uh, AJ back to the Yankees for a sec. H- how many years does Brian Cashman get? I mean, he, I know he brings them to the postseason, but when the expectations are high, I also just think in general holding a job for for twenty some odd years is just too long in baseball. Well, yes. You want me to go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, ask my high school coach. He's been there for 45 years. So <laughs> <laughs> the guy's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, I, there's a lot of question marks going on there. I mean, to figure that whole saga out, to trying to understand, like, you know, who should hold a job longer? Who should be there this long? I mean, you ask the fans. It's uh, Everybody wants them out. And it's. I think it's just a lack of not moving pieces. And I, and I think that's the biggest part as a Yankee fan understanding you got to find ways to get new guys in there if it's not working. And you can say it all. We're, yeah, he did. He said we're in it to win it. Cashman did. But 
yeah, everybody's in it to win it, but are, are the right pieces there? Everybody is struggling at the same time. There's got to be something that you had to do. You picked up a middle piece in, in the bullpen. Thought there could have been uh, something more to go there, but we'll see. There's still a lot of time left.